Discover the most dangerous jobs during World War I in this eye-opening video. From trench warfare to handling explosives, learn about the risky roles that brave individuals took on during this tumultuous time in history. Find out how these jobs contributed to the war effort and the sacrifices made by those who performed them. Watch now to uncover the deadliest jobs in World War I. World War I, also known as the Great War, was one of the most brutal battlefields in history. The fact that military technology was at a tipping point with the past made it a particularly interesting but deadly war in many ways. We must understand that in a war where we were just beginning to understand the concept of modern warfare, many tasks were carried out with actions so inhumane and perverse that it is difficult to describe them. Although we could say that all jobs in this war were extremely risky, there were some that were undoubtedly much worse. After watching this video, you will be grateful to have been born in this era. Sit back and prepare to learn about the 10 most dangerous jobs in World War I. Sappers on the Western Front During World War I, the army employed many infantry soldiers who performed mining tasks to dig tunnels under no man's land. The main objective was to place mines under enemy defensive positions. When detonated, the explosion destroyed that section of the trench. However, the work often lasted up to a year, and sappers were prone to extreme fatigue and horrific conditions in the tunnels, which were often narrow, dark, and cold, and sometimes collapsed, burying the miners alive. If that wasn't enough, sometimes the enemy tunnels would meet their own, resulting in underground hand-to-hand -hand combat, often in complete darkness. Experts say that visibility in these battles was so limited that the only way to know whom to attack was to place a hand on the shoulder. If they felt shoulder straps, it was a German. The largest mining operations of the Great War took place in Belgium during the Battle of Messines, where British tunneling companies detonated 447 tons of explosives under the German lines, killing about 10,000 Germans. The explosion was so strong that it was even heard in London. The nearly simultaneous explosions created 19 large craters and are among the largest non-nuclear explosions of all time. Those in the path of the explosion were not only killed but vaporized. Sentries. Sentries were responsible for watching the enemy and alerting their comrades that there was an attack. They were primary targets in an attack, as the shifts were usually long, nocturnal, and under any weather conditions. Practically, sentries were exposed to artillery attacks and enemy snipers most of the time, with minimal cover. Additionally, another major problem was not falling asleep. Shifts lasted hours and hours at night, and under military law, falling asleep or getting drunk on duty was a crime punishable by execution. Many soldiers were executed for falling asleep on guard duty. Being a sentry was a job of absolute horror. Zeppel and crew members. During World War I, the German army made extensive use of Zeppelins as bombers and scouts. Zeppelin crews were a military elite, all highly qualified, exceptionally fit, and resilient, possessing great courage and nerves of steel. Zeppelins were not simply gas-filled balloons but had a rigid structure, with the interior of the 200-meter long hull being a gigantic cage of duralumin beams and steel cables housing up to 19 hydrogen cells. The huge flying machines were often battered by strong winds, engines seized, metallurgy shattered, and instruments failed in extreme cold. The crew suffered from severe headaches, nausea, exhaustion, and frostbite. The Achilles heel of Zeppelins was hydrogen, which could be easily ignited by incendiary projectiles or even simple bullets. Early in the war, they flew too high for Allied aircraft to reach them, but the hydrogen could ignite and immediately engulf the airship in flames. 66% of German Zeppelins were shot down, and 40% of all Zeppelin crew members lost their lives. Wiring parties. Wiring parties, also known as wire in pairs, were used during World War I on the Western Front as an offensive measure against the enemy's barbed wire obstacles. They worked at night to repair, improve, and rebuild their own wire defenses while sabotaging and cutting the enemies. Cutting parties managed to open gaps in the wire lines, offering their comrades a better chance of crossing no man's land. The work was dangerous and stressful, as enemy sentries were trained to listen for and spot these nocturnal raiders. Any suspicious sound or movement could give away their position and bring a burst of machine gun fire. Wiring parties were exposed to enemy flares that immediately exposed them, causing them to lie down, sometimes on the barbed wire itself. Trench Raiders 
Trench raiders went out at night to infiltrate enemy trenches, killing and capturing enemy troops, destroying high-value equipment, conducting reconnaissance for future mass attacks, collecting important documents or maps, or simply keeping the enemy stressed and threatened during their sleep. Raids were carried out by small teams of men who blackened their faces with burnt cork before crossing the barbed wire. Raids were conducted quickly and silently, eliminating sentries guarding the trench as quietly as possible. Raiders knew that the longer they stayed in the trench, the greater the likelihood of enemy reinforcements arriving. They were armed with sticks, bayonets, hammers, axes, pick handles, and brass knuckles, avoiding firearms to avoid alerting the enemy. Tank Crew Members One might think that being inside a tank would provide good protection from enemy fire, but that was not the case for tank crews in World War I. Tanks had the advantage of breaking through difficult terrain and barbed wire to attack the enemy, but their mechanical and logistical problems were much greater. They got stuck in mud craters, were easy targets for artillery, and German machine guns could penetrate their fragile armor. The tank's engine was in the middle of the vehicle and became red hot, slowly cooking the crew and releasing carbon monoxide that intoxicated the crew members. Additionally, the noise inside the tank was so intense that many suffered from hearing damage. Messengers or runners in an era when wireless communication was still primitive, World War I armies relied on messengers or runners to relay messages between units. Runners had to be physically fit and agile, with excellent stamina to quickly traverse muddy battlefields and other obstacles. They also had to be skilled map readers and possess especially resilient characters, as their missions carried a greater threat of injury and death than ordinary soldiers. Variable weather conditions exacerbated this threat. The risk to a runner's life was so great that messages were often sent with several carriers on different routes to ensure that at least one reached their destination. The film, 1917, by director Sam Mendes follows two young British army messengers on a race against time to deliver an important message and is a faithful portrayal of this military job. Combat Medics Being a combat medic in World War I was a much greater physical and psychological challenge. Every day, medics encountered severe injuries and had to find a solution and do their best without books or more experienced colleagues to advise them, with the pressure of knowing that not only the soldier and his regiment but also the soldier's family depended on them for brilliant treatment. Conditions were not sterile, and medics suffered the agony of sealing dirty wounds, knowing that the patient would probably die later. Additionally, medics were also exposed to diseases produced during the war and often suffered from their fragile health conditions. The story of combat medics is often unrecognized, but without them, many more soldiers would have lost their lives. In conclusion, World War I was not just a confrontation between nations but a human tragedy where millions of lives were caught in a whirlwind of violence and destruction. These dangerous jobs represent only a fraction of the horrors that millions of men and women endured during this conflict. It is important to remember and honor their bravery and sacrifice so that we do not repeat the mistakes of the past.